I'm going to show you how to make the best artist wall easel. It'll last a lifetime and it's really not hard to make. However long you want to make it, it's going to change how much wood you get. I like to make them out of oak, walnut, or maple, but uh, anything like poplar or pine would definitely work as well. Oak 1x3s, which are 3 quarter by 2 and a half. Now I'm just going to chop everything to length on the miter saw. You could use a circular saw. You could use a hand saw. You could use anything just to cross cut them at 90 degrees. Always cut the ends off to square them up. Now keep in mind, I will personally hand build one for you if you go check out uh, wall easels on Etsy. You can check the description for my website. I got eight pieces at five and a half inches, four 40 inch pieces for the masts, and two 18 inch pieces for the risers. Basically taking a chunk out of the middle of the board. I cut that out. You could do a few passes with a circular saw. Meow, meow, meow. Thin it out. Do, 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 do. You do it on a band saw. I made this little jig for my router. Now that all the pieces that you need to make an 80 inch easel are cut to length, now is a good time to sand everything. I like to round all the sharp edges off and make sure it's really nice and smooth before assembly. Now I'm going to assemble the masts. I like to tack it with this, glue, and some dowels. Now since you're gonna use a couple of these for your risers to fasten them where you want them, you can use this to space how far apart now you don't want them super tight you want a little bit of a give so that it can slide nice and smooth if it's too tight ugh, ugh, it gets caught well see i make sure they still slide use these to square it up Now I angle them two different directions. I don't go straight in. That's gonna make it hold way stronger. I find the middle. I mark it on nine. I want it a half inch. The bolt will go at two. I'm gonna mark my dowels. Three quarters inch. Give it a little pokey pokey. Something for the drill bit to fall into. Now what you would do, flip it upside down. Line it up, go through, take your pencil, and mark where it goes. By all means, get creative on how you want to fasten them. It's totally easy to glue and clamp them. They could be done just like that. You could do a bunch more. Pop, 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 pop. You wouldn't need anything more than glue and some brad nails. But I'm fancy. You get the extra credit this way. Okay, I'm gonna let the glue dry and then I'm gonna poke the holes for the dowels and the bolts. Like that. Now it's time to poke the holes for the dowels. A drill press is not an absolute necessity for this step. Um, there's little jigs you could do 
with just a simple drill to get a really straight and perpendicular hole in your boards. Now I'm going to be poking the holes in these back plates for mounting it to the wall. I use a 1364 bit, but 316s works really great too. For my dowel joinery, I like to really spread the glue in, make sure it gets full contact on as much of the dowel as possible. And uh, I drill the holes half inch for my half inch dowels. Notice how I choke up on the hammer so I don't beat it all the way through and knock out this board. Because these dowels are so tough, if you whack the tar out of it, it'll actually separate what you've done before. I tap it in. Now I trim all the dowels flush with a flexible high tooth count hand saw. It uh, takes a little bit of practice. You don't want to cut into your board surface when you're trimming off your dowels. Some people use a playing card to make a gap. And sand it nice and smooth. Final, like 220. 